Hi guys, today we're going to be discussing the Industrial Revolution. This instructional block will give you guys the tools to be able to describe some of the things that happened in the Industrial Revolution, as well as some of the technologies and important figures in the Industrial Revolution. You guys will see the impact that the Industrial Revolution has on the rest of the world and how it affects countries, development, so on and so forth. <clears throat> so what is industrialization? Basically, industrialization is the modernization of the world. During this time period, it happened around the 17th century, it happened between the years 1700 and 1900, maybe a little bit farther, a little bit before. But um, you see this transition from an agricultural farming society into a more industry factory driven society. And uh, what kind of effects come from this? Well, there are several. The first thing is that the world becomes more interconnected. So I'm talking about trade routes and uh, goods that are available for trade and the prices and basically the, the trade economy. So you see trade routes are becoming much more easily available and much more accessed and much more used. You see new trade routes cutting through the, the Atlantic Ocean as well as the Indian Ocean. Europeans have access to goods from India and China and you, they're affordable, affordable prices. So these are just some of the side effects that happen because of this industrialization. You also see a huge impact of technology and this technology works hand in hand to spur the growth of cities and industrialization, urbanization, etc., etc. Um, you see a lot of migration patterns and a lot of immigration to these cities because of this industrialization. It provides more jobs as well as more food, uh, more opportunity, etc. So the first thing we're going to talk about specifically is the beginning of the industrialization in Britain. So Britain becomes the first civilization to industrialize solely based on the textile industry. This is the first large industry that is able to produce serious uh, product. It is able to just produce mass amounts of textiles uh, at, at like amounts that have never been seen at this level before. And this is because of technology and because of society growing that this is possible. So these textiles, if you, if you didn't know, textiles are um, woven products or uh, clothing, carpet, anything that kind of just deals with thread or cotton. Cotton was the main resource, resource for the use of these for the making of these textiles is it was the main raw material for these textiles uh, so these textiles the, oh, so I'm sorry the main imports came from Egypt India and the United States um, there was no cotton farms or very little cotton farms in England so they relied on imports uh, mainly from the United States and slavery um, they produced a lot of raw cotton and uh, it was a raw material for these textile factories. Uh, as previously mentioned, uh, this, this uh, textile boom impacts trade significantly. Textiles become a huge, huge um, resource and a huge demand and they are starting to get shipped out all over the world. And uh, because of that, the price drops. So there is, there are these textile factories are generating enormous amounts of wealth. And this wealth is, is, is being recycled back into the city. It is being 
recycled back into like with these these same people continue to use your wealth and create new industry new businesses new classes even and uh it's 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 almost like it's a boom it's like a economic boom and pretty soon you see all sorts of new businesses coal industry rail ra railway industry starting to pop up and this is just all a factor of the industrialization um so like i said th this industrialization would not be possible without the advancement of technology one of the main uh technologies was uh power it was a steam engine that was a main uh, a main source of power that allowed these large factories and allowed these smaller factories to operate these these mills and plantations the steam engines were able to power these large uh organizations and allow them to make a generate revenue so the steam engine was not always as powerful and effective as it was uh in the middle towards the end of the industrialization the first steam engine was created by thomas savory in 1698 and then thomas newcomen added on uh, by design by adding a piston onto the original steam, steam engine which made it a lot more powerful but still a little unstable James Watt came around in the 17th in, in the 18th century and uh, added a cooling mechanism which really made the steam engine a lot more effective and resilient and uh, really upped power outage as well as uh, reliancy on this equipment and this technology. So this is a huge uh, source of power when it came to operating larger facilities. A couple key figures, um, Eli Whitney and Thomas Edison. Eli Whitney is a British inventor. Uh, he created the cotton the cotton gin, which um, it was base, it basically allowed farmers or, or slaves to uh, harvest cotton at a extremely, extremely efficient rate. Um, all these new technologies are just revolutionizing the way that people went about their business before. Another major uh, technology created by Eli Whitney was interchangeable parts. So this allowed for manufacturers to be able to create items and products with the same parts. So you see the beginning of mass production being uh, created. So this, like, farther down the line, you see this leading to auto automobile assembly lines and mass production. Um, Thomas Edison, another key figure. He is an American uh, inventor. And he came up with the light bulb, the phonograph, and the first type of camera. And um, it's interesting because you see, obviously the the light the light bulb revolutionizes American households and American uh, access to power. But uh, also think about the way that the photography impacted the American society. You see the birth of film later on, the birth of pictures, and um, it, it it breeds to uh, this almost new type of culture in the United States. And it's all just uh, derives from this, this camera. Um, some other technologies that you see, the spinning jenning that, uh, that wove raw cotton into thread spun into thread really quick really quick uh that's a technology that a lot of textile factories used um it made it really efficient to be able to make thread out of raw cotton really really fast and the sewing machine that kind of made these textile factories obsolete once people could start buying sewing machines and portable sewing machines textile industry started running a business because people could make their own clothing and textiles at home with their sewing machines um 
So <clears throat> with this growth of textiles and this growth of business, there is obvious, obviously going to be population growth. So you see migration from all over the world, all over the country. Everyone starts is coming to these cities and you see the creation of new industries. As mentioned earlier, you see coal is start, coal starts to become a huge industry. It becomes part of the power industry. You see the growth in, in railways. Um, surprisingly, you see death rates starting to fall, even though these some of these people lived in very terrible conditions there was more access to food in these cities and more access to social uh interactions which which could help help with uh part with uh with the decreasing death rates um so with this increase of population you see the increase of work and labor and so the workforce is increasing and workforce conditions are decreasing. So worker conditions are just at an all time low. You see children, children are working absolutely grueling hours as well as women, men, and salary is extremely low. Minimum wage is, has not been in effect. So there is pretty much no type of protection of these workers at the time and uh because of that you it, it kind of just leads to the union movement which basically is a bunch of uh laborers coming together on strike and walking out of work to uh basically demand better rights for them for that for their as as workers for their working conditions um, you see a lot of immigrants, like the Chinese, um, working on railways and in the coal industry. Um, these are just new businesses that are opening or new uh, types of industry that are starting to open up all over the world. And uh, with, with industrialization, you start to see diminishing of slavery. You see... Um, these new technologies like the cotton gin they are allowing they are allowing these slaves and these workers to be able to harvest uh crops quicker and more efficiently so farmers are starting to lose money therefore less and less slaves are starting to slavery is starting to, to diminish slowly eventually completely so back to that, to that union uh, movement, these union movements and these uh, labor laws start to influence the way that politics and uh, the way that politics will influence economic wealth, individual economic wealth. You see the rise of capitalism. Our uh, nation becomes a capitalist nation. You see, if you don't know, capitalism is the belief that government should not have any interference or very little interference with an individual's uh, own economic success or wealth. But at the same time, you see ideas of socialism, utopian, utopianism, and communism being thrown around to try and combat i guess capitalism or to try and throw counter um socialism is where basically the government owns the money and owns money and wealth and gives it out accordingly utopianism is basically the belief of, of a perfect society and communism is that everybody uh you know regard like doesn't matter job or uh class everyone receives the same uh compensation and they just basically work for the state so capitalism overall becomes the reigning uh economic force yeah so uh that wraps about wraps it up